Welcome to Citizen Arcane, where we discuss whatever takes our fancy, but there are a lot of bees. Books, bubbles, bikes, beer, and minor league obscure sports, which I guess you would say is balls. So today was my first experience with the fan-controlled football league live, and I took the MARTA because I hadn't been to that part of town, and I wasn't 100% sure I wouldn't get lost. And I thought parking might be a problem, which proved to be a little bit true, but I will go again, hopefully not alone this time, and I'll probably drive. The closest MARTA station was a little bit less than a mile away, um, so I walked, and the walk was kind of enlightening. There were a lot of woke political signs, well-kept dog parks, expensive bikes and cars, and it just looked like a pretty wealthy, uh, kind of yuppie part of town. Please do take the time to like and subscribe. Every click is appreciated, including those on the top of our channel page and in the comments section. We appreciate every click and on the products we sell especially, and we hope read and act upon every comment. Uh, so, you know, approaching the facility was quite nice. Uh, there was a skating rink and several stalls selling hippie chic clothes and jewelry. Also a couple places where you could buy over-engineered, overpriced coffee served by a seventh year senior with extensive body modifications and a disdain for all things normie. The actual Pullman's Yard is a beautiful building, building currently housing uh, Imagine Picasso, which I will likely check out with someone who likes art more than sports. Um, the facility that had the games itself uh, looked like kind of a makeshift makeshift movie, movie studio from the outside. There was not a lot of parking space, which again was one of the reasons I took the MARTA. And there were some food trucks and a lot of FCF par uh, artwork, which I believe were the result of Steve Aoki, who seems to have really done well in establishing the tone of the in-game experience. Uh, there's a nice entry with a little bar, a place to buy t-shirts and stuff which I thought was only a little bit overpriced, looked like 25 to $30 range items. Next time I go, if there's something in that, you know, sub $20 range, I'll probably pick something up. Um, when I got there at the beginning of the second half of the board game, Aoki game, excuse me, board ape Aoki game, and there was plenty of good seating, although the grandstands, i.e. the cheap seats, were all behind the end zone, and the offense always worked towards that end zone. There were cool, expensive, almost European opera or theater style boxes along the sidelines, and I liked that there was uh, there was the same kind of drones that the USFL game had. There were a couple of DJs and hype men, although there were no cheerleaders or mascots, which is a little odd because they did a good job of having a photo op point outside. Um, you know, so I thought that was a little strange. The level of athleticism was good, and there was a vibe of being in a, a sort of a club where there happened to be a game going on. I was surprised there wasn't like a wait staff. So there was alcohol available, but at $11 for a can of beer, it seemed more than the usual level of high pricedness that one gets at a game. And I'll be back. Overall, I spent $20 for the ticket and another $25 on food and drink. So not too bad for watching a part, uh, parts of three football games, all of one, and then parts of a couple others. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and have a great day.